Yo, what is up? It's your boy Dragon back with another video, man. Today, man, I'm gonna be showing y'all how to make what y'all seen on the thumbnail. Yeah, I'm gonna be showing y'all how to make these clickbait YouTube video thumbnails. So, without it being said, let's just straight into the video. If you enjoy, make sure y'all like, subscribe. And I ain't gonna lie, your boy got a lot of energy. I'm feeling too good right now. So, let's get straight into the video. All right, man. So, the first thing you wanna do when making these, you wanna go in Photoshop or Photo P or whatever you're working with. You wanna go to File New and you wanna pick 1280 by 720. Now, when I get done doing that, what I'm gonna do is go to File Open and open in my screenshot. And I'm gonna tell y'all how i even got the screenshot all right so this is gonna be the image i'm using right here for the video and if you wonder how i got this i do have videos on how to get screenshots and youtube videos in hd quality so make sure y'all go check that out it's on my channel but with all that being said once you get in here you want to hit Control c come over here hit Control v and now what i'm gonna do is resize this image if you wonder how i do that i just click on this and drag it down with my mouse but i'm gonna do that and be back with y'all mary like mj carry i need a bear all right, so once you get your image in here, the first thing you want to do is hit P on your keyboard to go to the pen tool. And what we're going to do right here is we're going to cut out everybody on this image. So all the people you see, we're going to cut that out. And I'm going to speed this part up so you can just follow what I do. And if you do have trouble cutting out, I have several tutorials on my channel showing how to do that specifically. And I have specific ones based on IRL thumbnails. So make sure to go check that out. If you need to find it, let me know in the comments section. If you need help with anything, let me know. But let's get straight into this. So let's cut this image out. <music> So now that you're done cutting out the image, you want to right click, make your selection. We're going to have a fitter radius on one. Hit OK. Then I'm going to go over here. You ain't got to worry about this right here. Just go down here and create your mask. And after you create your mask, what we're going to do is you see these little spots right here that still have stuff in it. I'm going to go in there, speed of the video. You can slow it down. But basically, I'm going to be doing the same cutout thing that you see me just do. But I'm going to actually do it to fix these little areas in the thumbnail. So I'll do that and let y'all know anything if I have to. Alright, so for example, this is like the first one I just did. So like I said, we're going to follow the same steps, you know, do your little thing. But instead of making a mask this time, we're going to hit G on our keyboard to go to the paint bucket tool. Make sure the color is black on the color picker and you want to tap in there while the color is black. And make sure you selecting the mask when you do that. Now for right here, what I'm actually about to start doing is using my brush. So I'll hit B on my keyboard and then make it smaller. And make sure your hardness on your brush is zero. And yes, I said hit B on your keyboard. That's how you get to the brush. It's a shortcut. But you just want to use this tool right here. Just go in here and start shading this stuff out. And I'm making it smaller with the brackets on my keyboard. And I use the left bracket just to make it smaller. Right bracket to make it bigger. But just shade some of that stuff out. I'm going to be doing that to the image. And I'm going to speed that part up. All right, so the first thing you want to do now that we cut done, cut out everything, and I know you see the little hair right here. We're going to get to that later on, but what you want to do is hit Control j on this, and that's going to make a duplicate of the image. Now you want to go down here, let's go to Brightness and Contrast, create a clipping mask by clicking that right there, and you want to up the brightness on this image right here. So now you want to go to the background, you want to right click, and you want to actually delete that layer mask right there. And now that we have this, what we want to do is go into this image right here, double click it, Go over here and add a drop shadow. And actually with the drop shadow, you can keep these exact settings right here because this is perfect. So, but let's just say I didn't have the perfect settings. What I did basically was I lowered the distance down to 14, 
mess with the size a little bit because it's not has to be perfect but i kind of went off of how his thumbnails already are so and then for the opacity i went around 60 you can do something like that in the blending mode when i have it on normal color black and that's pretty much it for that all right so now like i said with this hair over here um the reason i didn't go to it first because i want to do the drop shadow so i can see what i need to take out so basically what i'm going to do is hit be on my keyboard go to the brush once again and to the with the brackets to the right of my keyboard i'm just going to make my brush bigger or you can just go up here up the size on i got around 150 something like that so make sure you're on the layer make sure the color is black over here on the color picker and you just want to shade um on this to get this hair that we do not need because it won't really make a difference nobody will really tell especially when you brushing it out and the hardness is on zero so now that we have that i'll let y'all know what we need to do next all right so now what i'm gonna do is add some vibrance and saturation to the image because this um thumbnails are saturated a lot and they have a lot of vibrance on them so i'm gonna put this on 10 and put the saturation on about 14 or 15 and the thing about it if you do have a certain screenshot that does matter when you're making the thumbnail so keep that in mind because i know everybody will work be working with something different all right so now we want to go to the background and what we want to do is go to filter blur and we're going to go to gaussian blur and like i say these settings right here are pretty much perfect too so you just want to go to that and put your radius on two or you can do 2.1 it's up to you but just do something around two if you have a different screenshot it may make a difference if you use a different type of blur so just use some around in range now for the background we want to go down here and go to hue and saturation we want to add a clipping mask and we want to turn the lightness down to negative 10 that's really what i use on these type of thumbnails so use something like that and make sure you blur the background and you should be looking in the right direction so now what i'm going to do is add brightness to contrast put it above the hue and saturation i'm going to set this about 20 something 28 uh, i think i'll do around 29 for that right there if i can get to i just leave it at 28 but for this we want to set the contrast uh, about double of what we have on the not double i'm tripping i can't do math but we're going to set the contrast a little higher and what we have on the uh, brightness right there so yeah just do something like that and you can see a difference if you take it off and put it back on same thing with the lightness you can see a difference so just have something like that all right so the next thing i want to do is bring in this text box and we're actually going to put um some text in it, of course and you can find this text box in my free IRL pack on my channel about everything you use you can find it in that pack but i also have several google drive packs with this in there so just look on my channel for a free pack you can find that in there but once we brought in the text box what i did was hit control c and went over here and hit control v but once we get it in here we want to go over here to the horizontal type tool and i think you can hit t on your keyboard to get to it but just make sure you get to it the fun i'm going to be using is the minecraft fun i will leave this in the description but basically i'm gonna just type some text in here put you a 10 um you know just put something in here if you make it a thumbnail that relates to the video so i'll just throw this in here like so now that i have this i will hold control on my keyboard and select both of those while holding it i will put it in a group hit control j on that group then hit control e on my keyboard to merge them together and i'll just name this right here the text box if you do want to name it and i'll make it smaller and put it right here i always add a little tilt to my text box i never keep it straight up because i feel like when we add that tilt to it it make it look a little better so i'll do something like this and don't be afraid to put it on top of the uh people you cut out on the image because that'll actually make it look better too so do something like that add a little drop shadow to it the first type of drop shadow we want to add is this one right here we don't want to add no size and no spread to it we just want to have straight distance on it and kind of lower the opacity and kind of keep it up so we'll do something similar to that and after that i also want to hit Control j on that create a new layer hold control select those two layers and merge them together so basically you just want to rasterize the layer that's all i really could have did if i wanted to but um you want to lower the distance on this once again but this time you want to add size to it and you also can add some spread to it but when you do add size don't add too much and kind of keep it how i'm doing it right here so yeah do something similar to that and we'll keep that right there now what i'm gonna do is bring in these emojis you can also find them in my pack I think the only two emojis I need is the heart eyes emoji and another one. So I'll be back when I get that. All right, so I got these two emojis in here. Now I'm going to hit Control C and come over here and hit Control V. Now I know for his thumbnails, he used like a different type of heart eyes emoji, kind of like emoji that are mixed together. So you probably can find that on Google. But for the video, I'm just, you know, I add my little twist. So I'm going to just put this on here. And basically what I did was just hit Control C, hit Control V, bring it in made it smaller to rotate a little bit you know it's nothing really to it so i just put it behind them and obviously i add a drop shadow to it 
um let's see i'll do something like this opacity just make sure you can see basically make sure you can see the drop shadow but don't make it too too much visible but still make sure you can see it so now that we have that what we'll do is go get the other emoji he control c on it come over here and he control v and when i made this thumbnail before i did have more room to put the emoji but right now i don't even really have room and to be honest they don't use that many emojis on these type of thumbnails especially if it's close up like this so i just slide one over here on the side or something like that you feel me you can just put one over there i hit right click copy the layer style right click paste it over here and if i'm talking too fast it's really because I, I feel so good right now i can't even control it man i got so much energy but yeah just do something like that and to be honest i might add another text bar right there just on how i'm feeling but now what i'm gonna do is go to file opening i'm gonna bring in the arrow everything i'm using can be found in my pack as you see i'm going into a pack while we talking right now you feel me i went in there got this right here these are my arrows so i'm gonna just go over here to the mark you tool drag this across my screen hit Control j come over here Control c come over here and hit Control v and after i do that i'll just make this smaller and you may have, have not seen people do this on these type of thumbnails but i'm gonna hold control and kind of tilt this arrow a little bit because i just don't like the way it was standing so just hold control and go at the edges and make it tilt a little bit if you want to do that but i'm just trying to do something that relates to the thumbnail and to be honest i really didn't have to use this arrow but just because he uses so much on his thumbnails i want to make it um fit on the thumbnail somewhere so yeah what you want to do is just basically add a drop shadow by everything you make when making these you will have a drop shadow so we'll do something like that add some distance to it and add a little spread to it and keep it simple you always want to keep it simple so don't add too much stuff and to be honest if that's it i'll let y'all know and be back with you yeah so it looks to be it um i know when i initially made it for the first time i did add a little bit more brightness so i'll probably just add five to make it look a little brighter but that's pretty much it now what i'm gonna do is drag it into a camera off filter hold shift on the top layer and keep holding it click the bottom layer i do it on every thumbnail i make what i'm gonna do now is hit control j on that group i just made then hit control e to merge that group with each other go over here to the marquee tool drag this across the screen like so and hit control j on it come over here right click convert it to a smart object and that's gonna make it way easier if you want it change something that's smart object will help you go back instead of having to hit control z and going to your history and all that but basically when we get in here man i'm gonna add my little camera um number 57 i love this little effect because it makes the thumbnail pop so much and i do have a tutorial dedicated to this effect right here and showing you how to maneuver it make it look better camera filter all that good stuff i don't know what i'm talking about but look once you come in here just mess with your contrast lower your shadows up your texture mess with your vibrance and if you don't want to hear all that just copy the settings that i have instead of trying to figure out how to do it yourself because i know that'd be way easier for you so yeah just mess with that little stuff and you'll be straight you'll catch on to it but you can see a big difference when i put on the camera filter versus when i didn't have on the camera filter. i know this is really not like his style i'm kind of doing my own thing but that's pretty much like a how i like to do it myself so Right here we get the mild details you can see it make the thumbnail pop a little bit more and this is topaz left right here if you need help getting any of this stuff just let me know join my discord some people will assist you i might help you out but basically um just add a little bit of strength if you do have this this is like the same thing it's adding texture or adding sharpening to the image so once i get done with this i'll just go to camera filter once again and for that i will add some noise reduction so the thumbnail won't have too much you feel me too much roughness on it we don't want it to be too rough so we'll add some noise reduction on here add a little bit of sharpening and i noticed on his thumbnails he actually has some noise um so i'll look for that real quick well it's really not noise it's really called grain but he had a little bit of this so i actually throw on about 12 yeah 12 throw on some of that and you feel me? That's still a thumbnail right there. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Be my dragon. But if you want to know how to export it, just go to File, Export, Export As. And I'm going to just name this B Wavy Dragon Tutorial. And that's pretty much how you make the thumbnail. Like I said, if you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Be my dragon. Peace out.